Hello everybody and welcome to StarNet Link and today we're going to be going ahead and doing a book review. This book review was recommended to me by someone from my audience that saw my live stream about Palladians and Nordics and recommended me to read this book and give my opinion about it and maybe discuss some concepts uh, concepts from this book. So this book is called um, The Palladian Agenda a New Cosmetology for the Age of Light, and it's by Barbara Hanclow, and it's semi-authored or semi-narrated in the book by um, Brian Swim. Um, this book was published in 1996, so the information in this book is about 30 years old, and to get a background about this book, um, it gives a very structured um, viewpoint about the evolutionary process of the human spirituality metaphysics sort of way and also explaining some of the religious aspects or stories that are interlaced with our knowledge about the human race and about our development. Um, before, before I begin any more talks, I'm just going to warn people that I will be giving out spoilers about this book. So if you have not read this book, I recommend you going and reading this book and then coming back to the book review because um, I am going to be talking about a lot of different concepts within this book. So for people who are interested in reading this book, um, I'm just going to give out a warning. Um, this book has a lot of sexual innuendos in this book. And I am going to read a couple of passages from this book. Um, so the Pleiadian agenda is mostly narrated or channeled information from a Pleiadian being known as Satya. And for me, a little bit about this information, I'm not trying to bash them for, for this being channeling information. Um, I do know that the way that this book is written and the way that Satya presents information, I do know that we are mostly dealing with the Palladian from the Aaron con within the Palladian constellation, there is a planet or a colony planet known as Era within the Palladians. And one of the reasons why I know this is because of the way that she presents the information and it has a lot of sexual innuendos in it, as well as a lot of interesting facets of information that might be very important for some people to know. There are certain Palladians that don't like presenting information in that sort of way, and they're very straightforward with their information. Satya takes it from a different approach, and she has been studying the human race for many, many years. And she explains that the Palladians interrupted the spiritual evolution about the human race about 26 to 30,000 years ago. And um, she also talks a little bit about Atlantis and Lemuria. But the main focus about this book is the information that is presented about the Anunnaki, and especially Nibiru. Um, some of the information about the Anunnaki in this book is somewhat accurate and some of it is not accurate. Um, mostly the way that she talks about it is that she thinks that Nibiru um, is an entirely different planet that operates within the human solar system. And also the Anunnaki came from the solar system, started influencing humanity and started programming us. Well, they did start programming us and did start, um, you know, programming us and changing the fundamental aspects of us, of ourselves. But one of the things that I do want to talk about is that the Anunnaki's home planet is not in this solar system. It operates in an alternate parallel reality, similar to Earth. So I can understand that the way that they try to explain it for the general audience um, makes it seem like that this planet is here and now, which is not. Um, 
a lot of the stuff about the Anunnaki programming humans is pretty much accurate, but the location of some of these star beings or the information about some of these different ET races that are mentioned do not have the correct location of where these beings are coming from. And I don't know if that's deliberate or not, but they do tell, they do say that um, that the human race consciousness is trying to pull in Syrian beings to the planet because the Syrians had great influence in building some of the monuments or the stone temples around our planet. Um, most of that is true. What they don't explain that the Syrians didn't really build some of the monuments, the actual native reptilian race that lives on Earth actually um, helped build some of the pyramids on this planet. So I don't know that the Syrians gave the native reptilian race the information to build these monuments or stone temples or not, but they do sort of explain that in the book that the entire genome of the human race is based on reptilian DNA or a native reptilian being race. So it makes it look like that are makes it look like the way that it is described in the book that we're semi reptilian in nature, like the human race is semi reptilian in nature. And it starts to go into discussing certain different types of programming stuff, like we're programmed to like our entire society runs on violence, sex and distractions and ego and they're starting to explain that we're starting to shift away for people who are really interested in the age of aquarius and the mayan calendar this information that she talks about is quite accurate about how a lot of people thought that the mayan calendar was the end of the human race but they explain that the mind mind said that on purpose to show that we are moving into a new age, like we're moving out of the current age and moving into a new age, which is the age of Aquarius. And for people who don't know a whole lot about the Mayan myth, so apparently on December 21st, 2012 was when we originally started to ship into the age of Aquarius. And a lot of people thought it was the end of the world, and we were programmed by the Anunnaki to fear its change. Um, it goes into that the the way that she explains it is that the Anunnaki actually created the Christian religion to basically keep us in a programmed state, as well as trying to better program us during this shift which mostly explains a lot about what is going on right now in the current state of affairs right now in the United States and one of the things that I do want to mention is that she does talk about that the planet earth has been been run by masculine energy for a very very long time and this is basically distorting a lot of the energy on this planet. And she also goes into explaining, which I will begin to read some passages from the book toward to explain. But she says that the main reason why a lot of couples are probably not, are not able to conceive a child is because they're having a child in the wrong location. She explains as the human race starts to move into the age of Aquarius, a lot of people are trying to promote the aspects of the human race evolving energetically, spiritually, and metaphysically, that the way that we are going to develop the old methods of reproduction to our food, to the way that we perceive is all going to change, including our government structure. 
So what, sh what Barbara Hancrow or what the channel entity is, is that for couples who are having trouble conceiving to have a child, is that you're having problems um, conceiving a child in the wrong location, but also because the only way for a couple to actually create a child is that you have to be deeply in love, not just on the physical plane, but also on the spiritual plane. And she discussed that more and more couples are going to find it extremely difficult to have a child because they only have physical love for each other and not spiritual love, which is going to cause a lot of problems. So they're saying that the only way for couples to have a child in the near future is to not only be in physical love, but also spiritually love, and that most children will probably be conceived through energy ley lines or near portals to order to allow different souls or higher dimensional beings or what they're mostly trying to on talk about where it's going to start reintroducing the long lost souls of Lemuria back onto Earth through these portals. And this is what the age of the shift is, is bringing back ancient knowledge and people and the information of Atlantis and Lemuria back on this planet to order to heal and reset humanity back on its proper course of evolution and spiritual evolution of metaphysics which is starting to happen. I am starting to see, and a lot of couples are starting to see this, that it's getting more difficult. They do explain, they, they do talk about in the near future that um, implantation or artificial implantation, and even seriously, it's not going to work anymore because the energy system is not going to work or allow that to happen meaning that on the spiritual side of the human race, it will prevent souls or prevent children from being born any other way except through the mother because every single woman on this planet's womb is a portal. And the only way for that portal to be activated is through not only physical love, but also spiritually love. And this spiritual love will start to help cleanse the planet's energy systems because it's pure raw love or cosmic love or what a lot of people refer to as unconditional love. And it's kind of a little bit interesting when you get into the entire dynamic of it. And um, there's a very specific passage that I do want to read from this book that I thought was kind of interesting, but also kind of funny. But um, it mostly discusses um, the energy patterns or some aspects of it, some aspects of it. But but it but when you first read it, you take a pause and. Um, you kind of snicker about it, but then you start to like realize that um, what they're talking about is actually true, and we're actually starting to see it happen. Um, let's see if I can find it. So, for people who are don't really want to listen to sexual innuendos or how do you want to say um, energy blueprint of stuff then this is probably not going to be the right book for you but they mostly discuss that a lot of energy programming is mostly based through spiritual sex like actual deep meaningful loving energy and so she mostly has this paragraph in the book that I'm going to read, which is really, really funny when you first read it, but when you analyze it a little bit deeper, you will understand how it all works or correlates. So while one of you is having sex in a three-day, four-day being beings can feel your energy and trigger you into lust, guilt, abuse, or fun. 5D energies can get excited by your community fire and have cosmic orgasms. 
And 60 energies can explain the field of your pulsions throughout the galaxy. 70 entities can carry your feelings via galactic information highways. 8D energies can organize new morphic fields out of your sexual seismic waves. And 9D energies can birth new biological forms in the darkness of the galactic center black holes. Isn't that not awesome? So basically it's saying how powerful we are as energetic beings and how energy works on this planet and the reason why they're mostly starting to see that the old ways a way that we perceive or do the old things when it walls around sex is no longer going to be quote unquote normal that it's going to change and some people might see that as funny but it kind of begs the question um maybe the number one reason why the birth rates of the planet is decreasing not just because of economic stresses but also because it's a spiritual wake-up call that the old waves are not going to work anymore and the new waves or the new generation is going to take over for the age of Aquarius and bring earth back into alignment with mother earth and the way that it should be um, it does also discuss a lot about the energy dynamics between males and females and mostly discuss how the Anunnaki basically um, spiritually by hat the evolutionary or energy um, systems of this planet. And a lot of the information that they discuss about the Anunnaki is true, especially around... Um, about the programming earth but i don't know how much of the information is true about the location about some of the stuff and the way that they mostly describe where this information or where nabiru or where um hanaki are from mostly makes me believe that it's semi-accurate i don't know if that's the done done deliberately but there were very specific pieces of information that I just knew that were correct about the Anunnaki. But everything else about this book, about spiritual programming, religious philosophy, and understanding how the human body is moving from a carbon-based life form to more letting more light energy into our bodies. And for people who are really interested in learning about like the basic understanding about the age of Aquarius and the evolutionary process of the human being. I would recommend people reading this book, but I wouldn't trust every piece of information in this book, especially about the Anunnaki, except when they talk about programming. But the other pieces of information about the energy dynamics and the history of the human race, energy patterns, are mostly accurate. Um, the dynamic or the information or template about the human race is accurate, at least from my knowledge. But some of the other pieces of information dealing with the Anunnaki are not accurate. And I would recommend people who have finished reading um, Dolores's books to start reading Barbara's Handcrow books. Um, I only read the, her first one, which is Plating Agenda, so it makes me want to read more of her books and expand on that knowledge, but if you have read this book, um, what are your thoughts and opinions about this? Um, if you have read this book, um, what are your thoughts about this? Um, I do know that I'm not really into the whole religious aspects of things about human history but one of the things that I know is that every religion around the world um, has the same sort of story has the same template of a story um, same characters but with different names throughout across different religions across the world and a lot of people have confirmed this over and over again that we're worshiping the same beings, but with different needs and different aspects. 
to order to help us understand in different avenues or different um different areas in the globe perceive different things based on where they are and the only way to explain it was through metaphors and spiritual teachings like what this book is mostly talking about um i really enjoyed reading this book i do think it will help a lot of people to help them explain a lot about the energy understanding of the planet age of aquarius the Mayan calendar and understanding like first D five first D to like nine to twelve D energy and stuff. But one of the other interesting things about this book that I do want to show is that while she is um um talking about everything, she does give out diagrams. Don't know if you guys can see that. But yeah, she does give out diagrams of like explaining like what she talks about or a basic blueprint about stuff, which is kind of interesting. Um, the beans that she talks about is very vague information about these beans. Um, the location about some of these beans, I don't think it's accurate, but the main race that I think they're talking about, the Syrians, I don't necessarily believe that it's the Syrians that are trying to influence humanity. Um, I do believe that it's mostly Octarian that's trying to influence or bring spiritual teachings, but I might be wrong on that. But um, about the being, about the being um, Satya, she also talks about that the Palladians have their own spiritual library, which is called Alcyon. And I don't know if I have any like Palladian star seeds that listen to my channel. Does the Palladians actually have a library or a cosmic library called Alcyon? Um, if you have read the book, um, she mostly explains like what it's about. But um, they mostly give a warning and they mostly tell people this is that these ET beings are not here to hold us hand and let us go through this a spiritual awakening. As the human race, they want us to do this alone and unite the human race. And they mostly say that a lot of ET beings will not help us on our spiritual journey as the human race because they want us to figure out on our own. And most of them are just afraid to get stuck here energetically in the past. And they like they do know that the Anunnaki programming is being dismantled. But in their right and their understanding that due to the fact that we're such a violent race and we focus more on our fear and stuff, that it's something that we personally as ourselves are going to have to learn to get over. She's starting to, there's also starting to say that a lot of our physical health will mostly be based on our emotions. Like if we don't start controlling our emotions or regulating our emotions or releasing some of the emotional burden that are on ourselves, which is going to start causing a lot of health issues. And once we start fig releasing some of these energies, it will really start to help us heal and she mostly mostly explains how the medical field might change or slowly change. But they mostly say that the reason why a lot of people might get sick is because they're not learning how to re regulate or how to understand their emotional stuff, which is causing physical physical ailments, like it's being like blocked in the body. Um, they also get into a little bit about chakra systems, which is kind of interesting. Um, but they mostly talk about that they don't really call it source. They call it the galactic center in this book, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, if people are really interested in learning about the Mayan calendar or understanding a little bit about the age of Aquarius, I would really recommend people reading this book. But just take the information in this book with a grain of salt. Um, it's really interesting to explore other people's per perceptions or different stuff.
but I would recommend after you're done reading Dolores's work to read her book because it gets into I do believe that Dolores's book is a lot a lot of abstract and all over the place and Barbara Hancrow's book is a little bit more structured into explaining things which I think that's what a lot of people might be looking for if you want to move on to that but yeah um thank, I just want to say thank you guys so much for the support thank you guys so much for listening and watching my youtube channel if you guys have any questions or comments leave them below if you have read this book I would love to listen see what you guys have to say about this um leave a comment below I would love to get your opinion about this opinion opinion about this book or a different perception about what you guys think about this book whether or not you believe some of the information in this book or not, um, whether or not this information is playing out, I do believe that some of the aspects of this book is starting to play out. You have to remember this information is close to 30 years old, so some of the information might be a little bit outdated, but um, I would love to get you guys' opinions. I also want to let people know that my YouTube information to contact me is my YouTube profile. Donation links are below if you want to help support my channel, but please share, like, or comment on my videos. I really appreciate it. Share my videos to other people. Give a thumbs up. It really helps my YouTube algorithm and also helps give me my information out there. But I love to explore these different books, different perceptions about different pieces of information and just to constantly learn on this spiritual journey that we have and discuss whether or not the information that is given to some of us is either disinformation or real information that needs to be looked over or maybe examined more further. But if you guys have read this book, I love to get you guys' opinions about it. But thank you guys so much. If you guys have any other books to recommend to read or want me to do a book review or talk about some of the concepts in the book, let me know. But hopefully you can join my live streams and my other um in my other live streams. But thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you guys so much for the support. And let me know what you guys think.